Hello everyone, welcome back. We are in the 11th module and in this module we are going to discuss how we calibrate our design codes and the first topic is partial safety factors. These type of factors actually we uh, often uh, notice in our codes and at the end of this lecture we will derive some equations that uh, we very often see in our codal guidelines. Now, uh, till date we have discussed reliability analysis uh, and uh, the design uh, that we uh, carry out it uh, normally deals with some limit state and those limit states uh, have random variables and once we define the problem statement that means limit state and the respective random variables then we can solve the forward problem and can evaluate the reliability index. Now when we follow a code there are different stages of reliability based design that we also discussed at the beginning of this course for example level 1, level 2 and level 3 reliability analysis. So in the level 1 uh, we have different factors proposed in the codes. Now when we follow some code and carry out a design the first question that comes in our mind how to evaluate the reliability of the structure that we design following those guidelines. So uh, the process of code calibration it has basically two parts. So in the first part uh, it carries out a reliability analysis of structural components designed as per present codal provisions. So for example, in our uh, IS456, we have different codal provisions. So if you follow those provisions and then for a particular structure, if you wish to uh, evaluate the reliability index, then first we need to define the random variables and their statistical properties. And once we do that, then uh, we can solve, for example, rackwitz fisler algorithm and can estimate the reliability index and associated probability of failure. So that's the forward problem. Uh, in the second problem, uh, we establish the reliability levels for present designs and uh, that uh, design situations may vary over the time. So whenever we have some guidelines, uh, then as the time uh, progresses, then also the design guidelines, the design philosophy and other uh, conditions also changes. Under those changes, what is the uh, level of reliability that also we assess and not only that uh, once we assess that based on those analysis what are the corrections that we need to incorporate to achieve a reliability level that also comes under this second category. Now when we talk about different design situations it can be because of different load combinations or it can be due to different ratios of loads under each combinations or maybe both. So under these situations, uh, these uh, codal provisions need to be re-evaluated to assess the reliability levels. So that is the theme of this discussion. Now uh, to understand that, uh, let us consider a problem. So we have, for example, a RCC beam, as you can see. So we have a simply supported beam and it is exposed to its dead load and also supporting some live load. Now when we uh, design this beam against flexure, then uh, normally following some codal provisions, we uh, design it against different uh, load combinations. For example, in this case, we have dead load and live load. So the load combination in this case is the effect from dead load and effect from live load. Then we add them up after multiplying some appropriate load factors and that becomes a load case. Under this load case, the beam is supposed to deflect and then we design this beam against flexion. Now obviously in this case we have a resistance which, which is the ultimate strength of this RCC section that we can evaluate. There are different analysis techniques uh, which we are familiar with and following that we can assess this uh, strength of this uh, RCC beam. Now obviously uh, uh, this analysis uh, for uh, strength assessment uh, deals with the theoretical model that we use and uh, there can be different approaches to actually solve this uh, ultimate strength. Now once we identify this uh, strength uh, 
which comes from the theoretical model. In fact, there can be some modeling error also in this process. Uh, so mm -hmm. we identify the statistics of R and then using that we move forward and further we assess the reliability uh, of this design where we have this load case D plus L. So D stands for dead load, L stands for live load and this subscript N stands for nominal case. So in this case DN means nominal dead load, LN means nominal live load and then gamma D is the load factor associated with the dead load. Similarly gamma L is the load factor associated with the live load. So now in case of strength also we can define a nominal strength of the member and we can also define the design strength of the member. So these are the two different strengths and obviously the ratio of these two strength we call it strength reduction factor because in our design philosophies what we do we normally underestimate the strength and overestimate the load. That's the general philosophy we add up. So whatever nominal strength we have that comes from a structural analysis then we uh, set a gamma r so that the uh, design strength design strength is somewhat less than the nominal strength that way we actually consider a lower value so that we always have some reserve strength to deal with any kind of on a certain uh, situation now this rn we can obtain as i said from the nominal values of variables using a theoretical model. Similarly, if we have Rd that we can obtain from the nominal values when we use some codal provisions. Now, once we have this strength estimated, then we consider the load combinations, which in this case say D plus L, that means dead load plus live load. Now, if we consider say IS code, and then uh, IS code uh, gives a load combination uh, for dead load and live load uh, in this format. So in this case, gamma D, as I have already mentioned, is the partial safety factor for the dead load. And then gamma L is the partial safety factor for the live load. And then uh, obviously DN and LN are the nominal values of the respective load. Now, once we have this uh, these parameters defined then the design strength we can estimate uh, but for that let us consider the IS code where these uh, values of partial safety factors are say 1.5 then obviously RD which is the combination of dead load and live load so it comes in this format so 1.5 times DN plus LN. Now if we uh, find out the design strength then obviously it is the RN uh, by dn so it comes in this format and ultimately obviously rd that is the design strength will be gamma r times rn where gamma r is the partial safety factor for strength now if we consider the failure surface under the load combination of dead load and live load then uh, we have this is the uh, expression for the failure surface what we call limit state now once we have this limit state, then we can uh, divide this by dn that is the nominal dead load and then we have this compact form where r by rn that is uh, the ratio of the uh, strength and the nominal strength. So we have this equation on your screen where uh, we get this equation just by dividing the original limit state by dn. Now, we can substitute the value of Rn by Dn in the above equation and then ultimately what we get is basically this expression. Recall we have already derived this expression for Rn by Dn as per IS code. Now once you do that, we get this expression for the limit state. Now just notice that this R by Rn or D by Dn or L by Ln, these are all non-dimensional numbers. So, mm, this entire equation is now uh, in non-dimensional format. So we can solve this limit state equation and we can estimate the reliability index. But for that, if you notice this R, D and L, they are the 
random variables and obviously the ratio of r by rn is also a random variable similarly d by dn is a random variable and l by ln is also a random variable now uh, for a given gamma r the reliability analysis can be carried out and we can compute beta for this limit state obviously for that we have to define this last uh, uh, term that is ln by dn so we set this ln by dn and then for that we can solve the reliability index beta for this equation now um, when we estimate the reliability index corresponding to this limit state of collapse uh, normally what we do we use uh, lifetime maximum live load uh, to evaluate the reliability level now for that let us consider an example because with that it will be further clear so what we have here in this case is a, a reliability based design of a doubly reinforced section this section we earlier used in our previous uh, reliability models so what we have in this case is a doubly reinforced beam as you can see the width of the beam is b the effective depth is d and then it has steels in the compression zone as well as in the tension zone now it is made of m20 concrete where m20 is the nominal mix and then fe415 grade of steel is used in this case and in this problem the mean and standard deviation of r by rn is given it is 1.25 and 0.152 then gamma r is given as 0.851 and the ratio of ln by dn is set to 0.6 and the load combination we use in this analysis is dead load plus live load so under this condition then we need to also define uh, there are two more random variables d by dn and for that it this is the dead load d is the dead load so for this combination we have mean as 1.1 and standard deviation as 0.11 similarly for l by ln the mean is 0.59 and sigma is 0.1645 now once we have this then uh, the type of distributions also we need to set so in this case r and d are following normal distribution and l that is the live load is following type 1 largest so let us uh, solve this problem and see how we can estimate the reliability index so in this case we define the random variables we have actually three random variables corresponding to r by rn d by dn and l by ln so we define x1 as the ratio of r and rn similarly we define x2 which is the ratio of d and dn and x3 as the ratio of l and ln so then uh, we also define some constants a1 and a3 you if you recall the equation of the uh, limit state is having this format obviously this third bracketed term we consider it as a constant if you look at the uh, parameters inside this ln by dn is also a um, ratio of two different loads live nominal live load and nominal dead load obviously we define this third bracketed term as a1 similarly uh, ln by dn we call it a3 uh, because it is associated with the third variable in the limit state equation that's why we call it a3 and then uh, once we do that uh, we get a safety margin in this nice compact form so we have this safety margin as a1 times x1 minus x2 minus a3 times x3 equal to 0. Now for this uh, particular safety margin we have identified the limit state equation as well as the random variables. In this case we have three random variables x1, x2, x3 and their properties are also defined. So we can easily solve the reliability index in this case. So let us solve it and see um, what is the reliability level for this design so we have this safety margin in this case a1 times x1 minus x2 minus a3 times x3 equal to 0 then uh, we can solve this using rackwitz switzler algorithm to evaluate beta if we do that we get this type of 
iterative solutions. So we start with some initial guess and then uh, in this problem we go up to third iteration and after third iteration obviously we see that the values of beta is converged and then we stop the iteration. So at the end of third iteration we have the beta as 4.569. So uh, obviously we set a stopping criteria in this case the difference between the reliability index in two successive iterations. So in the last two iterations obviously there is no difference up to third decimal place. So we stop the iteration there and for that we set a stopping criteria and we are familiar with this uh, iterative procedure that we have solved many a times in our previous modules. So our ultimate beta is 4.569 and then associated probability of failure is phi of minus beta. So in this case the probability of failure is 2.43 into 10 to the power minus 6. So ultimately what we get is uh, the probability of failure for the given design. And uh, this design we have solved for L by Ln equal to 0.6. Then what we can do, we can change this ratio and repeat the same procedure. And for every ratio of Ln by Dn, then if we repeat the procedure and plot the beta and we can then study how this ratio affects the change of reliability index for this particular doubly reinforced beam. And if you do that, we get a curve like this. So in this case, you see on the x-axis we have the ratio of ln by dn and as we keep on changing this ratio for this same uh, description of uncertainty we have solved beta and then we can see how this beta is getting affected. Now obviously as we increase this ratio that means the amount of live load nominal live load with respect to the nominal dead load then uh, as a natural consequence we expect in this case obviously the reliability index will fall and as you can see in this case uh, it started uh, somewhere close to 5.5 uh, and then gradually as we increase live load then it drops and we can trace the reliability index or probability of failure as we increase the live load uh, over this uh, structure. Obviously for this case we have used a load combination and the load combination in this case is dead load plus live load. But this problem clearly shows how we can actually use the definition of reliability and for a given problem we can use uh, nominal uh, dead loads and live loads then make a combination and once we make a combination we can identify the uh, limit state and then once we do that we can solve the problem and find out reliability index. So this is a forward problem where we identify the limit state and the associated random variable then obviously once we do that we can solve the reliability index. So if we take a different example in this case again our task is to identify reliability index beta and probability of failure pf for a RCC column subjected to gravity and wind load. So in this case we change the load combination so in this case we have d plus w as the load case. Now the gamma r for this case is 0.75 and then uh, the mean and standard deviation for uh, different uh, quantities that means r by rn, d by dn and w by wn is given here. So we have the mean and standard deviation for all these uh, ratios and in this case again r and d follow normal distribution and w that is the wind load is following type 1 largest. So our task again is to find out beta and associated probability of failure for the given values of wn by dn in this case is 1.05 and rd again in this case is 1.5 times dn plus wn. So in this case again the partial factors for these loads uh, is considered to be 1.5 but we can change uh, this factor as it is appropriate and then according to that factor we can find out the reliability index. So let us complete this uh, solution. So in this case we have Rd equal to 1.5 times Dn plus Wn that means the nominal dead load plus nominal wind load and then uh, we can find out the ratio of Rn by Dn as we did in the last case then uh, we have again Rd equal to gamma R times Rn. So we get this uh, expression of Rn by Dn and then finally 
if we consider the load case we identify the limit state in this case the limit state is r minus d minus w equal to 0 and then uh, if we follow the similar procedure we divide both side by dn and then we uh, i mean normalize this equation uh, then we get the ratios of r by rn which is a non dimensional number similarly we have the ratios of d by dn and wn by dn so we have already specified the values of wn by dn as 1.05 so this factor is known and then uh, we can uh, identify the random variables in this case and the uh, coefficient in this case b3 that means that is the ratio of wn by dn it is 1.05 and similarly b1 that is it is the ratio of rn by dn in this case it is 4.1 so we get this expression for the limit state equation and then finally if we define the random variables so we have x1 as r by rn x2 as d by dn and x3 as w by wn then uh, once we replace all this and then we get a equation of limit state in a compact form so we have in this case b1 times x1 minus hmm, x2 minus b3 times x3 equal to 0 again so what we do we uh, use equivalent uh, normalization because we have one variable which is non-normal that is the x3 uh, corresponding to wind load that is following type 1 largest distribution so for that we will adopt uh, equivalent uh, normalization so the failure surface uh, equation in this case again it is linear then obviously for this surface we can uh, find out the mean and standard deviation because this is a linear failure surface and in this case if we use Cornell's definition and hassoffer lindt's definition both of them will give the same uh, first order reliability estimate so what we do we use this case uh, the definition of Cornell so beta is nothing but mu m by sigma m so that we can estimate using this expression so we start with uh, the values uh, for this uh, random variable initially it is 0.1 uh, for standard deviation and 0.8 for mean so we start with that and then uh, immediately we can find out the reliability index just by putting the all the values in this expression so what we have in this case beta is equal to 5.7868 and then once we do that we can also find out um, the direction cosines so alpha 3 the third uh, direction cosines in this case is estimated as you can see on your screen so alpha 3 is in this case 0 0.2039 similarly we can also find out other uh, two alphas that is alpha 1 and alpha 2 and then obviously uh, we have already used this uh, transformation to convert the x space into z space so that will help us to find out the design point in the x space so uh, we can uh, find out alpha 1 alpha 2 and then obviously the properties of direction cosine if we use we can estimate this capital K and then uh, finally we can estimate the design points that is x3 star which is in this case 0 0.9180 similarly we can also find out uh, for this type 1 largest distribution the parameters of the distribution as you can see on your screen u is the parameter so it is 0 0.7550 then uh, at this design point uh, we can estimate the pdf and capital cdf as you can see on your screen so we estimate the uh, small pdf which is 1.4011 and capital cdf which is 0 0.8837 then uh, uh, we use the expression for equivalent uh, uh, standard deviation and mean uh, these expressions are familiar to us because this we used in our discussion on first order reliability method once we uh, do that then we can repeat the process uh, till the beta converges and then uh, we can uh, continue this process and you can see on your screen uh, we initiate uh, the iteration so after the fifth iteration we see the beta converges and the final beta is 5.5442 
and the corresponding values of uh, equivalent normal distribution for the third random variables uh, you can also see uh, in this table. So what we have beta in these cases 5.5442 and corresponding probability of failure is phi of minus beta and that is 1.47 into 10 to the power minus 8. Now uh, again, in this case, we use a stropping criteria based on the reliability index in two successive iterations. And uh, that's how we uh, uh, continue the iteration until and unless the convergence is achieved. Now, in this previous example, if you see what we do, we are first identify the limit state. And then once we identify the limit state, we express it in terms of the nominal values of the load combinations. And then once we do that, we can estimate the reliability index for uh, the given parameters. Now that is the forward problem. Now very often we wish to find out the safety factors for a given or target reliability index. And that's actually the purpose of this uh, today's lecture. So this process is just the reverse of what we have done. So in this process, we identify the partial safety factors so that at the end of the design, we achieve a target reliability index level. Now, obviously in the normalized coordinate system, different levels of safety that is beta will yield different failure surfaces. Now, then what we get is uh, different designs, obviously then uh, the reliability based design uh, aims to get uh, values of partial safety factors which if we use then obviously we achieve a required safety index otherwise for every design we need to evaluate the associated reliability index and repeat the procedure so in the reverse process what we do we identify the factors Normally, those are the factors very often we see in our codal provisions. Then if we use those factors and complete the design, in that process, automatically we estimate or we achieve uh, the reliability index. Now, let xi star be the design variable, uh, design value of the original variable. Then obviously, this is the failure surface, that is the limit state. So all these design values of the random variables x1 up to xn they fall over the limit state and that's the reason they satisfy the limit state equation and then if we use partial safety factors obviously all these uh, design values we can express in terms of partial safety factors so for example x1 star that is the design value corresponding to the variable one that we equate as gamma 1 times xn1 that is the nominal value of the first random variable times the associated partial safety factors. So exactly the same uh, format we used in the previous examples. So that is how we can express the limit state equation. Now Now, once we express the design values in terms of partial safety factors, then obviously the design point should be the most probable point of failure. And then uh, now the problem is uh, to estimate this uh, design point so that we can uh, achieve a target reliability level. Now, Obviously, in the normalized coordinate system, what we do, if you recall, zi star, that is the design value in the z space is nothing but alpha i star times beta. So when we solve iteratively, we actually find out this beta and associated alpha i star and using these two parameters, we estimate zi star. That is the um, design value of the ith variable in the z space. And obviously, this alpha i star, again, uh, we have already derived this expression. So this is the direction cosines evaluated at the design point, which is represented by this star. 
So obviously the variables that we have in the original space xi star is nothing but mu i plus sigma i times zi star. So zi star is the design value of the variable in the z space and that we can correlate with the x space through this equation. Then obviously in place of zi star we can replace this expression that is alpha i star times b and then we get in terms of alpha i star and beta what is the value of the uh, design variable in the original space. This expression we can further modify because sigma i normally we uh, express in terms of coefficient of variation that is delta i. Delta i is the ratio of the uh, sigma i and mu i. So if we do that we get this compact form. So xi star will be mu i times 1 plus delta i times alpha i star times beta. Now obviously uh, the partial safety factors in this case will be gamma i and that is the ratio of xi star and xni. ni is the nominal value of the ith variable. So if we just simplify this expression uh, just by putting the expression of xi star we get this uh, compact form of gamma i. Now partial safety factors are defined in terms of different uh, design values. In this case we use this xi star as the uh, design value of ith variable. So with respect to this xi star we define the partial safety factor. Now if we define partial safety factor with respect to mean value we obviously get xi star uh, we, with the ratio of mu y and obviously on the right hand side we get this expression. So that is the partial safety factor uh, with respect to mean value, uh, we also sometimes call it central safety factor because this is with respect to the mean value. Similarly, we can use any other reference point to define the partial safety factor. But in uh, reliability based design, when we set a reliability level beta, obviously corresponding MPP will prefer to use and in that case we use xi star as the value of the design variable and with respect to that we identify what is the associated partial safety factor. So if we consider an example a simply supported beam in this case we have its span is 6 meter and then again in this case we have dead load plus life load. Uh, obviously we use nominal values of dead load and live load and multiply that with the load factors in this case gamma d and gamma l and then that gives us the load combination. Our task is to determine the partial safety factors for the design variable xi if the target reliability is 4. So in this case we have three random variables. We have yield strength, dead load and live load and their uh, statistical descriptions you can see on your screen and all of them are following normal distribution. But in this case if you carefully notice the problem statement itself says that the target reliability level is 4 and for that particular reliability level our task is to find out the partial safety factors. In the previous problems we actually solved the reliability index for a given level of partial safety factor. So in this problem we just do the reverse. So here the limit state uh, equation you can see on your screen uh, obviously it is uh, the ill strength times zp is the capacity moment capacity then we have applied moment so the, the difference between these two is basically the limit state equation. Now in this case small l is the span which is 6 meter and then zp is the plastic section modulus. Obviously. Uh, if we convert this limit state into z space we get this expression. So all the random variables from its original space is converted to z space. So we have three random variables x1, x2 and x3 and then we have corresponding z1, z2 and z3 in the standard normal space. And for that we use this transformation where we subtract mean and divide by the standard deviation then we get the variable in the z space. So the limit state in the z space you can see is uh, the expression is here and then uh, uh, we further simplify this expression and then 
uh, also we define alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha 3. Then with the help of this, uh, we redefine the limit state in a very compact form. So uh, this is the equation and then finally uh, we can also find out alpha i that is the direction cosine uh, just by differentiating this uh, limit state equation with respect to uh, z i. Then uh, again this limit state equation uh, is a linear function and all the variables they are following normal distribution. So in this case again we can uh, find out uh, reliability index uh, using this format. So we first find out mu g and sigma g and the ratio of these two is basically the reliability index. Then uh, obviously in this case if you further uh, simplify we get this expression. Obviously you can see uh, in this equation uh, we know everything except this a because we know mu i sigma i and beta in this case beta is defined so we know beta so our task is to find out the um, partial safety factors so just by substituting all these values what we can solve is the value of a and a in this case is 0 0.135 now once we do that then uh, using this value of a we can now compute the direction cosines and if we do that, we have the values of direction cosines alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 uh, on your screen. And then uh, if you use the properties of direction cosine, then we can actually solve for k. And in this case, the value of k is 4.7061. Then uh, uh, we can subsequently follow the procedure uh, using these expressions and then find out what is the value of alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha 3. In this case what we get is alpha 1 equal to minus 0 0.789. Similarly we get alpha 2 as 0 0.223 and then alpha 3 as 0 0.573. Then once we find out direction cosines, our task is simple just to find out the design point in the original space and that we can easily do using this expression. So for x1 star, it will be mu1 plus alpha1 times beta times sigma1. And then if you put the values, we get the value of uh, first design point as 188.21. Similarly, if we repeat the procedure, we get x2 star and x3 star. Now once we find out the design point, uh, our task is very simple. Then we can find out the uh, partial safety factors with respect to nominal values of the random variables. So if we do that exercise, the first partial safety factor gamma 1 will be x1 star divided by xn1. So in this case, the nominal values of first random variable is given as 250 and the design value is 188.21. So ratio of these two uh, gives us the first partial safety factor gamma 1 and that is 0.753. Similarly, we can also find out gamma 2 that is 1.144 and gamma 3 as 1.262. Interestingly, if you notice that gamma 1 is the partial safety factor associated with the resistance or the strength that we have. So as per design philosophy, we underestimate strength and you can notice that gamma 1 is less than 1. Similarly, we have two other factors which are load factors. So we always overestimate load and that is reflected here. You can see gamma 2 and gamma 3 are more than 1. So when these are multiplied with the nominal values of load, so we increase the load level and then carry out the design. So if we use this, uh, uh, these partial safety factors, we get an expression of this. Now similar uh, type of expression you can notice in your code. So when we use this expression and complete the design, then what we achieve is the target reliability level. As in this case, the reliability level was uh, beta equal to 4. So if you follow this expression, using the partial safety factors that we have identified, then uh, we don't need to evaluate the reliability index again and again because these partial safety factor automatically ensures the target reliability index. The moment we achieve the target reliability index, in turn, we also satisfy the target probability of failure. So that's the 
main aim of the reliability based design so in this case uh, we use beta as 4 that means whenever we use these expressions along with these partial safety factors then we uh, ensure this target uh, reliability index provided we use the nominal values of the uh, design variables in this case the design variables are fyn and then uh, dn and ln so we set these values and find out what should be the value of zp so that this condition is always satisfied so in this case because our uh, limit state equation is linear obviously the kernels and hasselhoff lins definition they always give the same result uh, if the random variables are all normal so obviously uh, we don't need to uh, carry out the iterative procedure but uh, if uh, the need be we can continue the procedure and then using the iterative solutions we can also identify the partial safety factors so that is obviously when we have a limit state function which is non-linear or we deal with random variables which are non-normal so for that let us uh, take an example so in this case again we have a cantilever beam so the span of this beam is 3 meter and then uh, as you can see on your screen so we have uh, the random variables which are identified here and then uh, the target reliability level in this case is 3.75 so again in this case uh, uh, we can identify the limit state equation then uh, obviously uh, we have two parameters uh, which are uh, associated with this uh, cantilever beam one is l that is the span of this uh, beam and then zp that is the plastic section moment so if we convert the limit state into z space obviously we get this uh, expression so it is in terms of mean and standard deviation and obviously uh, our task is to find out this zp so that we can get a target reliability level so similarly again we define uh, these parameters a alpha 1 alpha 2 and alpha 3 and with that parameter we then modify the limit state equation and once we do that we can again find out the first derivative of this uh, g with respect to zi that helps us uh, to identify the expression for direction cosines and then we know the property of direction cosines that will help us to solve the problem so in this case again uh, uh, we follow the same procedure where we identify uh, this uh, uh, value of a which comes from this equation because in this equation we know all the parameters except a so we substitute all these parameters where uh, the values of b2 and b3 you can see on your screen b1 b2 b3 so b1 is uh, 59216.3 b2 is 10762.5 and b3 is 273.5 so once we do that we get a compact form of this limit state equation and then we solve it to find out the value of a now once we do that then using these values we can identify the direction cosines so in this case again uh, first we find out this capital K using the properties of direction cosines and then uh, we find out the three values of direction cosines because that helps us to identify the design point once we do that we can identify the partial safety factors in this case again uh, gamma 1 remains the same that is 0 0.753 gamma 2 is 1.192 and gamma 3 is 1.349 so uh, with respect to this uh, mean values uh, you can see the partial safety factor changes so obviously gamma 1 in this case is 0 0.717 and then gamma 2 is 1.084 and then gamma 3 is 1.928 so the moment we change the reference point the partial safety factor changes and then accordingly we can develop the design equations in terms of the reference point either the nominal values of the design variable or the mean values of the design variable so in this case again with respect to nominal values our partial safety factors are gamma 1 equal to 0 0.753 gamma 2 is 1.192 and gamma 3 is 1.349 so the moment we identify those uh, 
partial safety factors then we can develop the design equation so that once we use this uh, nominal values of the design variables then we always achieve the target reliability level so in this case our target reliability level is 3.75 and obviously we use nominal values of fy and similarly nominal values of dead load and live load and then uh, uh, we identify the design equation again in this case uh, the limit state is linear so we don't need to uh, iterate the procedure but obviously we can do that if the need be so with that our discussion on partial safety factor ends here thank you very much